In the first part of my course we have focused on configuration of a local development environment. I did not tell you anything about setting up Kubernetes cluster that is of course required before starting development process. Currently there are pretty many options for provisioning both local and remote instances of Kubernetes. The most popular solution for running local instance of Kubernetes is still Minik. It runs a single node cluster inside a virtual machine and provides a unified way of working regardless of the operating system. As a competition for this matro solution, we must mention MicroKITS and Kite. MicroKITS is a small, fast, single package Kubernetes for developers and IoT. Kind Kubernetes in Docker is a tool for running local Kubernetes clusters using Docker container nodes. If you are using Windows operating system, you may also think about Kubernetes on Docker desktop. Sometimes working with local instances of Kubernetes is not a desired approach or it is just not possible. In that case, you may choose one of the hosted Kubernetes platforms. In this part of my course, I'm going to show you two platforms, which probably won't be a first choice for you. However, they are especially useful for developers. These platforms are Sivo and Octeto. Let's begin with Kubernetes on Docker Desktop. By Docker Desktop is starting, you will see its icon in the Windows taskbar. Once it has been started, we may take a look on its UI dashboard. It is displaying status of Docker and Kubernetes. As you see, while Docker has been started, Kubernetes is still in progress. We need to wait a moment until the process is finished. After that, you may see a full list of pods used for cluster provisioning. Kubernetes is not enabled by default, so you must enable it manually after first installation. If you would like to run some additional software besides simple test applications, you should increase the limits of such resources like memory or CPU in the resources section. It's worth to check if you don't have any active VPN connections since they may interrupt startup of your Kubernetes instance. In case of any problems, you may switch to diagnostic view and download log file. Finally, we may verify the status of our cluster using kubectl command. Let's do that. The context Docker desktop has been automatically created and set as a default context. Of course, it is still a single node cluster and currently I have one application running there in a default namespace. Now let's take a look on Civo platform. Kubernetes is still on beta version there, but uh, good news is that you can be a beta tester and try out four nodes cluster for free. We can create a cluster using Cli, we can also do it in web browser. Uh, something that makes Kivo different from uh, other uh, hosted platforms uh, with Kubernetes is that it is based on K3S distribution. K3S is a lightweight version of Kubernetes that is using SQLite uh, as database instead of ETCD. Thanks to that, we may create such cluster in around two minutes. To do that, we just need to provide a name, set a number of nodes and just default plan. After our cluster is ready, we should go to the security section and copy API key. This API key is used for managing Kivo cluster uh, using its CLI. We need to set uh, this key using Civo API key command with a given name of a cluster. To save a new context uh, for kubectl, we need to run command Civo Kubernetes config with save option. This command will automatically add a context with the same name uh, as a cluster name to our local Kubernetes JSON config, and after that, uh, we may verify that uh, it has been set as a default context for Kubernetes, we may uh, take a look on the details of cluster using Civo command, uh, we may also do it uh, using its web UI. We may easily install some additional software there, li there like, uh, for example, MongoDB database. After a while our database is ready and we just need to, we can verify it and after that we just need to configure our application to use this connection. 
Now let me proceed to the last Kubernetes hosted platform discussed in this part of my course, Octeto Platform. It's a very interesting platform dedicated just for developers. We can easily deploy their predefined software like some databases or message brokers. Here you see that I'm deploying MongoDB. You can easily take a look on the logs and verify if it has been successfully started. Of course, we may manage our Octeto cluster using its CLI. First, we need to log in using Octeto login command. And uh, if it is our first login, it will create and add a new Kubernetes context into our config JSON file. After that, we may just use Octeto platform with kubectl command. As you see, there is cloudoctetocom context and we can verify that currently it is a single pod with Mongo database. There is a very interesting concept around Octeto. You can just use a proper base image to use it. And in this case, it is Octeto Maven plugin. We can also verify we can also integrate our application with MongoDB. Uh, assuming we have already created a, a definition uh, file for Octeto, we can use an Octeto app command to deploy our application on Octeto. As you see, it is building our application locally and deploying it on the remote instance of Octeto cluster. So that's a very interesting concept because we can work as a, as a normal local development, but we are testing our application on remote cluster. We can also do it with kubectl. We can verify that currently it has started at MongoDB and our database. That's all what I wanted to show you in this part of my course. In the next part, we'll talk about Scaffold, a popular tool for, for deployment automation.